think we'll be fine. Let me say hi to Kokui Hansen. Good morning. How are you doing? Oh, Charlie, it's the Friday before the big for the Monday. I'm 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 cool, Charlie. It's a final countdown. We're, we're ready for elections, aren't we? Ready to rule. We're ready to rule. To well, analyze. We, we voted already. Yeah. So we've got it out of the You're ready to delve into full politics. Full scale. Numbers. Calculations. <laughs> you need to start learning the names. Boom, kurubu, yu, yu. <laughs> you see you. Yeah. 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 The, the, the places have, are interesting. The places are very, very interesting. Yeah. And and last night was a good night in football as well. What happened there? Last night? Last Arsenal played uh, Thursday night football. You see, you see, you see, you guys, you see your lives. Four. Had Arsenal lost? <laughs> oh, oh no, 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 sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. Me. Europa, Europa, <laughs> or something, something. Uh, did they still do that thing? Yes, they did. Oh, sorry. I, I, I thought they. Oh, sorry, I'm forgive me. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry. Sorry. It's congratulations. The, Arsenal, don't mind. So, what, which one did Arsenal? You? Okay. What's the name of your opponent again? The Ghanaian Times <laughs> front page. <laughs> Former MPs not entitled to pension. Supreme Court rules. Ghana will not disappoint, says Shania Kobotri. And Auditor General can't surcharge Zoom line. Also, group threatens electoral violence and police chase members. Hey, what's wrong with them? Okay, the Daily Graphic says Supreme Court speaks. Mm -hmm. Former MPs have no pension. Zoom Lion can be surcharged. And there's a picture of Mr. Joseph Siawe Japon. All this right. Challenged Auditor General's uh, decision. No party branded face mask at polling centers. That's EC all. insists. Ekufado Mahama commits to peace today. Domelovo to account for four thousand and twenty dollar impressed, and GES posts eighteen thousand newly trained teachers. Mm. The Chronicle Monday is a done deal for Nana. Various polls suggest uh, Supreme Court throws out two <coughs> dead MPs. NPP guru mobilizes women for. Victory in Wulensi. NDC is a threat to free SHS, says NPP Youth. And Bono arrest opens the nyash of Accra police. Crikey. Mm. Nyash. <laughs> the wow, <laughs> Chronicle. Wow. <laughs> okay. Delhi Guide says, vote MPP with a huge exclamation mark. We are winning big, Ekufuado. Vote NDP to honor Rawlings. NDC free varsity fee is a scam. And Zoom Lion floors Auditor General at Supreme Court. Plus, Mahama behind fake tape, mm. minister says. The finder, Mahama incoherent on education policies. Ghanaians must reject him at the polls, says the MPP. We are poised to provide relevant support to SMEs, says the MD of CBG, that's the Consolidated Bank. Election 2020, peeping through Nana Kufuado's track record and biography, an Auditor General has no powers to surcharge Zoom lions, says the Supreme Court. A Daily Statesman says, Baumia exposes Mahama's tribal politics. It's a PR scam. MPP cautions students on Mahama's ill-conceived free tertiary education promise. Nana Kunedu urges Rawlings loyalists to vote for NDP. The informer, Team Mahama, confess Sami Jemfi has destroyed our campaign. My promises are genuine, says Mahama. Rise above tribal politics, Baumia tells Mahama, and consensus of swing voters. We won't vote for Mahama because of Sami Jemfi's abusive attitude. Okay, that's the front page of the informer. Okay, the Ghanaian Observer says, Ghana, make it a kufado. The North has seen through Mahama's tribal politics, Baumia. Auditor General has no powers to surcharge Zoom Lion. That's according to the Supreme Court court kunedu blasts ndc and Mohammed's free tertiary promise is a scam that's according to the mpp the business and financial times election 2020 monday is decision day auditor general has no powers to surcharge zoom lines says the supreme court and access bank wins banker financial inclusion <coughs> award the herald says more controversy over a kufado's forty thousand dollar bribe video as urban mm. roads director's wife breaks silence but leaves gaping holes Reject Amewu's vote buying tactics. Mahama edges Hohoi residents. Domelevo rubbishes 4,020 debt, 4,020 uh, US dollar debt claim by Osafumafu's hitman. And Calibos and others endorse ministers' derogatory remarks against Dumelo. Let me take you to citynewsroom.com and give you a few more stories. You can't become president with lies. Akufado to Mahama. Meanwhile, Mahama says, MPP deliberately tagged me corrupt for political advantage. Meanwhile, voters register court dismisses plea for disclosure of quarantine names. Dumelevo debunks claims he owes about $4,000 from foreign travels. 
and meeting of a transfer of special voting ballots at Adaklu ends inconclusively. Still on the campaign trail, don't be intimidated by increased security presence. Mahama to Fodome, residents in the Volta region. 6,073 junior officers promoted. This is from the police service. And uh, my resolve to contest 2020 polls remains unbroken. Nana Kunedu Ajiman Rawlings. Citybusinessnews.com. Ensure your premises against eventualities. SIC urges businesses. This is in the wake of fires. Abosu can spare pass dealers match for peace ahead of December 7 poll. And government completes negotiations to revive national airline. So watch out for that one in the next few months. Meanwhile, if you go to my journal online, MPP's savvy use of social media cost me 2016 elections. This is Mahama. Also, chief abdicates to contest in parliamentary elections. And NDC MPP si on, silent on source of funding for some policies. This is an economist doing some analysis. And Akufado Mahama to sign peace pact ahead of polls. National Peace Council reveals. Watch out for that one. If you go to Star News, teachers declare support for Mahama of unpaid arrears in Ho. Also, I don't owe a peso. Domelevo replies audit service. So, there's a lot of audit things mm -hmm. in the news this morning. <laughs> Other stories, Justice Badigbe cries in court as he retires today. And Chief blames family planning for low school enrollment in Busan North District. Wow, if you go to GNA, President cautions non performing road contractors. Hmm. President cautions non performing road contractors. <laughs> we want the list. <laughs> Meanwhile, 350,000 existing ECG customers to benefit from Pokwasi bulk supply point. And electoral officials who violate EC code will be prosecuted according to the EC. Okay, so let's get into all these court audit, Supreme Court things. So many stories like this. Okay, um, okay. so there are two lines of court stories. First, let's talk about former MPs. Mm -hmm. So this one is on the front page mm -hmm. of the Daily Graphic. Mm -hmm. And it says, the Supreme Court has delivered two landmark decisions mm -hmm. which border on the surcharge powers of the Auditor General and the benefits accorded to MPs upon their exit from the legislative body. Okay. In their first decision, a serving member panel of the Apex Court unanimously held that the Auditor General had no constitutional mandate to surcharge private waste management company Zoom Lion over a um, 184 million CD fumigation contract. Mm. Now, the panel was presided over by Justice Jones Doche with Justices Yawapel, Gabriel Puamang, Samo Mafusao, Ma Mafusao, Mafusao, sorry, Mafusao, Mariama Owusu Clemens Jackson, Honye Nuga and Isifu Omoro Tanko Amadu as members. Mm -hmm. In its second decision, a differently constituted seven-member panel of the court also declared unanimously that it was unconstitutional for MPs to be paid pensions when they left Parliament. Now, that panel was presided over by Justice Jones Doche with Justices Gabriel Puamang, Agnes Doji, Nene Amegache, um, Avril Lovelace Johnson and Joy Henrietta Mensa Bunso as the other members. The judgment was delivered by Justice Nasiru Suleiman Agbadegbe, who was reading his valedictory judgment to officially symbolize his retirement after 31 years as a judge, 11 of, whom, 11 of which he served as a justice of the Supreme Court. Some background to the Zoom Lion case. So, the Auditor General issued a surcharge in its allowance against Zoom Lion in 2008. <coughs> For a 184 million CD for fumigation exercise contract it carried out for the health ministry. Mm -hmm. But the exercise was paid for by National Health Insurance Authority. Now, an audit carried out by the Auditor General on the accounts of NHI revealed that Zoom Lion had between the year 2007 and 2018 allegedly been paid a total of 189 million devoid of due process. Now, the Auditor General at the time, Daniel Domelovo, contended that Zoom Lion continued to receive payment for the fumigation exercise from the NHI even when the contract between the latter and the Ministry of Health was a four-year contract which started in August 2009. Zoom Lion appealed the decision to the Auditor General or of the Auditor General at the High Court on December 5, 2018 and urged the court to set aside the surcharge. Now, Justice Georgina Mensa Dacha dismissed the appeal in January that year. The Zoom Lion then went ahead to the Court of Appeal where the case was further referred to the Supreme Court for consistent interpretation. So, yesterday, the court ruled that Auditor General could not have searched as Zoom Lion in the specific matter. The detailed judgment contained the reasoning will be published. So that's the first story. Now the other story about the, the former MPs mm -hmm. is also quite significant yes. because it has a lot of implications for those who are trying to go to Parliament today. Mm -hmm. Did the story give you any more details about that one? Okay, so it stated that after 12 years of unsuccessful attempts to get their pensions paid mm -hmm. as recommended by the CHC, the 43 MPs instituted a legal action at the Accra High Court on February 26, 2016 to compel the government to pay them. Mm. Now it goes on to list some of the MPs. Now this group coincidentally is head 
funded by the PNC candidate. Oh, who you interviewed Pastor, yesterday? Yes. So, so uh, he's leading them to try and receive yes, some. Yes. And the Supreme Court says no. No, the Supreme Court says no. Now the court says that. Um, Okay, now it says that mm -hmm. it, it was the considered view of the court that mm -hmm. former MPs were rather entitled to gratuities. Ex gratia. Mm -hmm. Yes, which the court defined as lump sums or ex gratia. Instead of the, yes, as the, yes. the one they're asking for. Yes. All right, now let me give you something which is also related. So, Domela Voice in the news. So, yes, in the case of the Sum Lion case, the Supreme Court says no, but he's also responding to something else. This is citynewsroom.com. Domela Voice debunks claims he owes about $4,000 from foreign <laughs> travels, a separate issue completely. Auditor General Daniel Aldo has debunked claims by the Ghana Audit Service Board that he owes about $4,020 from foreign travels in 2018. He issued a disclaimer after a letter signed by Chairman of the Audit Service Board, Professor Edward Diagiman, said its findings show that Mr. Demelavu did not account for an impress of $4,020 set aside from the total per diem allowance of $1,640 he was given. Mr. Demelavu noted in a counter statement that per section 2 3 of the and seven of the Public Financial Management Act 2016 and the Audit Service Regulations 2011 CI 70. He is not answerable to the Audit Service Chairperson. He quotes, read sections 2, 3, and 7 of the Public Financial Management Act 2016, and you will realize that the mandate you and the board purport to have under the Audit Service Regulations is that of the Principal Spending Officer. Hence, I am not accountable to you. He also says, not even a person is outstanding against me for any advance or impress that I took for any of my travels. He further questioned the authority with which Professor Dua Ajiman is querying him. According to Mr. Demelofu, the board's mandate had expired. Then he also, as we know, is on an extended leave and and we know that civil society organizers have appealed to the president to to, to, to overturn that, that leave has been given and there's a whole lot of controversy. We are told the matter is going to court. Okay, let me come to you in the Ghanaian Times. All right, page three of the Ghanaian Times. Group threatens electoral violence. Police chase members. Mm. The police have launched a manhunt for the arrest of a group of men captured on videos circulating on social media, firing gunshots and threatening to cause violence during the December 7, 2020 elections. Five of them have been identified as Mohammed Mukhtari, Asma Musa Kadri and Watara. Mm. So the Director of Police Public Affairs, Superintendent Abaye, Abaye Buckman, mm -hmm. disclosed this to the Ghanaian Times in Accra, said that a warrant for their arrest, retention of fire ammunition and mobile phones, among other things, has been obtained from an Accra High Court. She said their conduct exhibited in the video amounted to acts of vigilantism, which is a criminal offense in the country's law. Mm -hmm. She urged the suspects uh, in the video, believed to be hiding in Dodoa, to turn themselves into the police, and she's asking the public mm. to also help. And cautioning people, of course, mm. that this is not on. No election violence will be tolerated right. whatsoever. What's on the campaign trail? What are they saying now? Well, uh, the last bit of the campaign, this one says, go out and vote. Okay. Nana charges electorate. Mm -hmm. And President Nana Kufado, and this story is on page two of the Daily Guide, says President Kufado insists he's expecting a high voter turnout on December 7. Mm -hmm. In this regard, he has admonished every eligible voter to make time by visiting their various polling stations to vote for the future of the country. Now, uh, he said, quote, go out and vote in high numbers, end quote. The president charged on Angel FM in Kumasi. He said it was the civic duty of every voter in the country to exercise his or her franchise when Ghana goes to the polls, saying, quote, I'm calling for a high voter turnout on Monday, December 7, because this is what we should do as citizens, end quote. There's a couple of, a couple of interesting Nanado Jomahama mm -hmm. stories, which mm -hmm. I think I'll just contrast. So, okay. if you go to citynewsroom.com, Nanado says to Mahama, you cannot become a president with lies. Then if you go to the same website, uh, Mahama is saying that MPP deliberately tagged him corrupt and used social, uh, social media to essentially tag him corrupt to win 2016. So I'll just give you those two angles. So uh, President Akufuado says the series of attacks on him by NDC, Flabrage and Mahama are clear indications that he has no campaign message. Now Kufado says the former president has resorted to attacks and name calling in his quest to, come, to seek a comeback. Speaking at a rally in the Kropo in the Eastern region to end his one day campaign of the Eastern region, the president said Joe Mahama has nothing new to offer. He accused Mahama of peddling falsehood, including fabricated stories to win vote support. Okay, so let me quote him. The campaign has landed in confusion, misrepresentation and outrageous or outright fabrications. That is the campaign of John Dramani Mahama. You cannot go to the presidency of Ghana with lies and fabrications. Ghanaians should not let that happen. Now, let's listen to Mahama too. Now, he says, MPP deliberately tagged him corrupt for political advantage. John Dramani Mahama, the leader of the flagbearer of the NDC, says the MPP deliberately painted him corrupt when he was president of political advantage in 2016 polls. Mahama says he really suffered from that tag because his government failed to respond appropriately. He explained that at the time, his administration thought Ghanaians knew the truth. 
quote, some of the corruption allegations against my administration were through factory. With some, with some saying I had hotels in Dubai, some claiming I had ships at the Tokyo Harbor, and myself and Lodina diverting $100 million World Bank money into our Swiss bank account and all. At the time, we thought that Ghanaians should, would see through it hmm. and, that, and there was no truth in it. So there are sometimes that perception of corruption created deliberately for political advantage. And I suffered a lot from what MPP did and we didn't respond appropriately. Hmm. Regardless of the time, Mr. Mahama insists his worst call in the corruption fight is better than what President Kufado had. He insists the president is currently swimming in corruption and must be voted out. If you go to my journal online, the version of the story now talks about the use of social media. Let me just add that. It says, MPP's savvy use of social media cost me 2016 elections. So, same conversation. And this is the angle they choose. Speaking to MFA Power, he said, when the MPP started spinning their lies and propaganda on me, his government ignored it, thinking that Ghanaians would be quick to spot the lies. But you know, somehow perception is larger than reality. Mm. So anything else from the campaign trail from other people, PNC, yes. CPP, A lot of talk about NDP. education as well. You know there's okay, this yes. back and forth about free SHS and who's Okay, let, let's get and, into that. And all of that. All mm. right, let's go to the Chronicle first. The New Patriotic Party says the opposition NDC, or National Democratic Congress, is a threat to the survival and development of the flagship program Free Senior High School, or Free SHS. According to the MPP, their opponent has no moral purity to seek to share the glory that has come with implementation of the policy by the Akufu government. Mm. This was a national youth organizer of the NPP, Henry Nana Bwachi, also known as Nana B, mm. uh, addressing the media yesterday, saying that President Mahama's attempt to associate himself with Free SHS is driven by ill faith, deception, and opportunism, okay. etc. What are the other parties saying? I heard NDP yeah. say something sometime, PNC and well, other people. Yes, yes, the Daily Statesman mm. uh, has a, uh, has an NDP story on page two. Mm. It says, former First Lady Nana Kunedu Ajiman Rawlings has urged loyalists of the late former President Rawlings mm. to vote for the NDP and its 44 parliamentary candidates on December 7. Okay. The former first lady in a statement signed on her behalf by the Secretary General of the party, Alaji Mohammed Frimpong, explained that her absence from the political scene, despite the closeness of the elections, was to afford her the opportunity to mourn her late husband. Mm. Now, it says... Um, so it goes on to detail some of the promise of the NDP and it also wished that the country would experience peaceful elections. Okay. Right. And the informer, the PNC is speaking, mm -hmm. break NPP NDC curse. Mm -hmm. Reverend Dr. Divine Ayuvo, the vice presidential candidate for PNC, People's National Convention, mm -hmm. is urging Ghanaians to sever ties with the opposition National Democratic Congress, NDC, and the ruling New Patriotic Party, NPP, and to introduce a new dynamism by voting for the PNC in the Monday polls. He says, mm -hmm. Ghanaians have always voted under decidedly in a one-way voting pattern mm -hmm. that was affecting development. And he added, if it is a spell that has been cast on Ghanaians <laughs> to vote for NDP and NDC, it must break in the name of God. Amen. He said this at the whole central market as he canvassed for votes. He says, you are suffering mm. after voting for NPP and NDC. Whether it is Juju or what, I don't know. <laughs> it's time to bring about a change after voting for the same two parties for the past 20 years. Let me give you a couple of interesting stories. Justice Badigbe cries in court as he retires today. This is starfmonline.com. It says, Justice of the Supreme Court, Justice Nasir Suleiman Badigbe broke down in tears while addressing a gathering of Supreme Court judges on his retirement day. Justice Badigbe, who has served the judiciary for 31 years. Charlie. Charlie. Really small. What a sacrifice. Since yeah. 1989, in his last day in court. You know when you're a judge, you can't do so many things. Yeah. Yeah. 39 years of his life in court. Yep. In his last day in court, read the judgment in the case in which the Supreme Court declared as unconstitutional mm. A Chinese report recommending pension payment for former parliamentarians. Justice Badigbe, after delivering his validatory judgment in the case of David Apasera and 39 others versus Attorney General, took turns to introduce two of his sons who are now lawyers. Wow. Mm. The emotionally looking Justice Badigbe eventually lost his voice in a packed courtroom with the remaining 16 justices of the Apex Court now before him, including Justice Kwesi uh, uh, Enin Yeboah. The Chief Justice John Joche, the President of the Ghana Bar, Mr. Anthony Fawson, and Deputy Attorney General Gwefedami all took turns to pay tribute to him. He retires at the age of 70 after 11 years at the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. Now, let me bring you a road story that I, I thought was brilliant, even though I don't know whether he will list the names. President Courses not performing road contractors, <laughs> which means he knows them. <laughs> Master, if you know them, deal with them. Eh? I, I, this story is from Mansoui Dubia in GNA. GNA has a story. It says, President Akufuado has cautioned. Oh, President, don't caution. Fire. He has causing contractors assigned the duties of rehabilitating roads in the country to focus on the job at hand. Here's a quote. Any contractor who demonstrates laxity in the performance of his duties Wait. will be shown <laughs> the exit. The president said, 
That's how he talks. <laughs> Any contractor who demonstrates laxity in the performance of his duties will be shown the exit. It's such, such a euphemism, like shown the exit. Like, <laughs> my boss, who is, is, <laughs> the president says, stressing that the Ministry of Roads and Highways ought to ensure strict supervision of all road contracts. Now, President Akubado, addressing a debate of chiefs and people of Mansur Dubia and Amansia South in Ashanti, said, there must be value for money in the execution of road projects in the country. Now, he was on a regional tour, was on a three-day working visit in the region. He was not happy with the deplorable nature of the road network in the district. Then he said in his second term, if he gets it, he would work harder to improve on the situation if the MPP was given the money. This is what he said. All right, so he didn't name the contractors, which I thought he would do. <laughs> Mansour Dubia. <laughs> we, have a minute, we have a, a minute morning. to go. Yeah. Well, look at the business of Financial Times. There's mm. an article here. Eyes on female VP candidate. Remember the survey you, you yes. talked about yesterday where yes. there were some specific questions asked yeah. about whether or not having uh, uh, Professor Nana Jane Opoku Ajaman would influence people's votes. So mm -hmm. people can check out page 21 of the Business and Financial Times mm -hmm. where former Education Minister Jane Nana Opoku Ajaman hopes that the decision of Ghana's main NDC or opposition NDC to nominate her as its candidate will inspire other women to enter politics. Mm. Quote, many are those who are now more energized to vote thanks to the momentous decision. She said this on her campaign trail um, after her nomination. She said that she and President or former President John Mahama um, are running against uh, President Ekufuado and, of course, Vice President Baumia. Some commentators saw her nomination as a politically astute move by the NDC to gain an edge in the race. And uh, some are saying that regardless of whether she wins, or it's a win because, obviously, having mm. a female in such uh, a, a, a position, mm. even as a candidate, is kind of like a groundbreaking for mm. Ghana, you know, for a major Lots political party. different angles coming through. Thank you, uh, Kokui. Thank you, Nathan. That was the newspaper review on the City Breakfast Show. Coming up next is the City Business News. Stay with us. This is